Or we're off on an adventure of a lifetime. Heck yeah. Alright. Fred. No. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I start with B. Bye bye. The filming. And you're sitting on the toilet. <laughs> I'm sitting on the toilet. A few moments later. So this is Brett trying to operate this machine. It's quite complicated. As you can see, it's got two buttons. Oh yeah, guys. Okay. And they control this thing. Oh, he's got oh, he dropped it. Uh, I'm sad. Uh, let's just get a. How many plays do you have? Uh, that was it. Pretty much sums up that entire one. Brett, think about it. So after sailing nine hours at night through stormy waters, leaving us tired and weary, because literally sleeping was like free falling, followed by an unrelenting upward force. It was it was crazy. We arrived in Devonport. Stopping off for breakfast at McDonald's, we didn't know where to go. So Lucas suggested we visit the Spirit of the Sea viewing platform. We're now gonna go see a guy spearing what looks like a fish. A fish. I actually think it's like a swan, but you know, it's up to interpretation, that's half a point. And they're just behind us, quite a distance, because Brett's really slow at driving. I think it's called preemptive bait. <laughs> he breaks about a kilometre before he has to. He says we're on the way back. See, his problem is his choice of colour on his wheel, because everyone knows that red cars are fast and mm. But the lesser known fact is that all these cars they look, they look pretentious. <laughs> okay, well, here we are. That's the man spearing something up there. Uh, stay tuned and we'll tell you exactly what he's spearing. Mm -hmm. Maybe we won't. So here we are at Mr. Speary Guy, who's not actually spearing anything. It's meant to be the spirit of the sea, which does kind of make things better, worse. Um, so they have toxic rocks here. And there's Lucas. Say hi, Hello. Lucas. Hello. There is a Woolies chicken bag down there. Yeah, a point. After leaving the spirit of the sea, we moved along the north coast, finding ourselves at Mercy Bluff. Just down the road, we have the hats. We have a very, very nice, very, very nice lighthouse. Leaving Devonport, we made our move down towards Launceston, stopping up at a few places to relax from driving. The first place we stopped at was the Parramatta Creek Rest Area, which, as its title suggests, it was a fitting place to rest. We've stopped off on our journey on the highway towards uh, Launceston uh, to Parramatta Park, or Creek or something like that. Got a nice few trees around. Very pretty area. We only stopped off there for about 15 minutes, thus the lack of photos. Next stop was the Ashgrove Cheese Shop. Why you ask? Turns out my friends like cheese. We stopped off again at the uh, Ashgrove Cheese and uh, Cheese Shop. Got a, I think it just sells mainly cheese, wine, 
feels like that sort of store. Got a few little uh, animals. I wouldn't say they're a, a, a very talkative bunch. Don't move too much. I think my favourite part about it though is that nice sign. Please don't feed the cow. They look pretty hungry, I've got to admit. So after around two hours of stopping here and there on the highway, we actually got to Launceston. Before we arrived at where we were staying for the next few nights though, we decided to make one more stop, but little did I know I was about to have a little problem. I think I've found the most beautiful part in Tasmania so far on this trip. Yes, my camera did just totally die then. No need to reset the film. And right at the climax too. Now, how's that for engaging videography? Don't worry though, you'll find out what I'm talking about soon enough. So just keep watching. So later, when my camera was fully charged again, this is one of their favourite games to play. Awesomeness. Where they control a Star Trek-like crew. And they're all obsessed about it, except me. Because they're not trying. For a good reason. See? It's very Star Trek-y like. While the guys played their game, I decided to make a little tour of the house. So this is the house we're staying in. It's in a town called Invermay in Launceston. Otherwise known as Radman House. Would you like to come and have a look inside? I'll show you why it's called Bradman House. So if we open up to the kitchen. Which is a pretty basic kitchen. Small fridge. Just very, very basic. Come to the dining room. It has uh, lots of uh, tourism yeah. This is a, a house that rents out, so they, uh, they give us other ideas where we want to go. And as you can see, lots of Donald Bradley memorabilia. It's uh, around the house. The uh, owner is much love Don, Don Bradley. So we come around here, the guys are all in playing their game with a small TV in the massive lounge room. It seems really strange to have so many big couches and with such a small TV. But come around, more Donald Bradman images, painting, very, very nice. A few bunks, a double bed. We keep going around. I've done it. Yes. Got a bathroom in here. Very spacious bathroom. Very surprising. And uh, my room. I get the double bed. I'm pretty lucky. guys alone for an hour and a half and now there's